I'm sick of playing games on this tiny little TV. It's so small. There, there's got to be a better way to play games than this. Oh, what, what's this? Oh, that looks cool. Really cool, actually. Oh, another one? Well, what do we have here? Oh, okay. I think I know what's going on. Yeah, this is... This is a lot better. Yep. Hello there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. Uh, about a month ago, I made this video where I tested out a projector sent to me by this company, Yabber. I did w weird things with it. You ever seen the Steam Deck being played while it was projected on the side of a bard? What about a kitchen cabinet? What about a toilet? It was just a kind of fun, goofy video, but I was genuinely impressed at the projector itself, and I've actually used it a lot since then. Anyways, Yabber has a new projector. That one in my last video was a sort of entry-level model, but this new one is supposed to be a freaking bad. Ass. It's it's brand new. It just came out. Apparently, they really liked my last video, and they were really enthusiastic about sending this. And they had lots of good stuff to say about it. So we'll we'll see if it's as good as they hope it is. But uh, that's not all. <laughs> I can't just do a boring old projector review. I'm Tech Dweeb. I'm here to have fun, and that's what we're gonna do. Damn it! So I'm also going to check out this at the same time. It's the Super Console Arcade Stick, and it has a built-in game console. So that's the idea. We're going to make a giant arcade with a classic-style joystick, and we're going to play some freaking giant retro games. Oh man, I'm excited. Uh, let's freaking unbox these things and have some fun, shall we? Uh, we'll start with a projector, I guess. The, the Yabber K2S. As you can see, this is an 800 lumens projector with NFC broadcast, Alexa compatibility, and a built-in Android dongle with 7,000 plus apps, apparently. Here's the specs if you want to see them. So it looks like this is going to be 1080p, 60 hertz, but it does accept 4K inputs. In the box, it looks like we get some accessories and the projector itself. Well, we'll check that out in a minute. And also some other stuff. Uh, we get the obligatory HDMI cable. I must have at least 900 of these by now. And an AV adapter cable so you can connect up old stuff like your mom's VCR. And we get the remote, of course, and a cleaning kit and a book of words and pictures. Oh, this, this is interesting. So this is the Android TV dongle that's built in. The Hacko, and it has its own remote and the power cord. And uh, the projector is super nice looking. It's not over the top, but it has a really premium feel to it. Oh yeah, uh, apparently these are powered by dual JBL speakers. That's what's under these fabric areas, I assume. And we have an HDMI hole, a USB-A hole, so you can plug in devices, a USB-C hole, which I assume is for the same thing, and a speaker hole, and an aux hole, where you can plug in that AV cable dongle. Down here is the little adjustable foot, so you could set the angle uh, if this is on a table or something. Overall, it's nice. It's a lot bigger than the last one. And oh, I just felt something open under my finger. Yeah, I pushed this secret little trap door over here. Has a USB-C cable in there. Interesting. Oh, right. Uh, there, there's our little Android TV dongle. So, so this just lives inside the projector itself. <laughs> That's actually a really neat idea. And now the arcade stick. The Super Console Arcade. Made by our friends Kinhank. This comes in a beige retro color and a black color. Around back, we have the diagram of the functions. Oh, right, yeah. So this has the ability to select X input, apparently. Uh, you could actually use this as a controller on your PC. You don't just have to use it as a console. So it's sort of like a dual function device. That's really cool. Uh, maybe I'll give that a test later. And in the box, we get a word paper, obviously. You <laughs> always got to have a word paper. Oh, good. Another HDMI cord. Just what I needed. And here's a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Uh, interesting. And here's a USB-A to USB-C cable, which I assume is for connecting it to your PC. And we get some extra buttons. These are for if one of your buttons dies or gets all crusted up with Cheeto dust. You can just swap it for a good working button. And here's a 15 watt power power adapter and you get an air mouse remote for all the air air mouse things that you need to do and here's the arcade stick in all its retro nes glory 
Wow, look at that. And we do have some plastics to peel off all the buttons. And there was some plastic on the black part that uh, does not come off easily. Uh, nope, uh, this is totally not coming off. Oh God, oh, I'm getting the tweezers out. Oh, it's like stuck under the buttons. Oh, holy crap, am I actually gonna have to take this freaking thing apart to get this off? Really? All right, fine. Uh, I can't live with bits of plastic hanging off, so I, I guess this video just turned into a teardown. Let's get this freaking thing opened and fix this. All right, so here's the inside. We'll poke around a bit. I just want to fix this button board sticker crap. Uh, there we go. Okay, uh, we'll call that good enough. So uh, while we're in here, let's take a peeky peek. It looks like we have our main board over here with active cooling, and it's connected up to a PCB with a USB-C port over here, and it's connected to this controller board over here where all the buttons and the joystick are plugged into. And that's connected back to the motherboard over here. And, well, I don't know what else to say. We'll just put this thing back together. I, I don't know. Okay, well, let's take a look. So, yeah, this looks like the classic NES arcade stick, but it also reminds me of that 8-bit dough version of the arcade stick. This one has a game console inside, though, obviously. The quality is okay. It feels as you'd expect for a lower-priced arcade stick. Maybe a, li a little bit above average, actually. It looks amazing. I love the retro vibe. They really nailed the look and feel, even down to the fine details like the system buttons. And we have all the I.O. that we could want, a USB-C hole for connecting to the PC, and an HDMI hole, and a USB-A hole to shove your dongle, and an Ethernet hole, and a speaker hole, and a power hole. And that's all the stuff. So uh, let's move on to the main event. Let me introduce you to the, the living room in my mom's basement. You can tell it's my mom's basement because of this ugly carpet. Oh God, I hate this carpet so much. I don't spend much time down here. And not just because of the carpet. My bedroom and computer room is like 10 times cooler than this boring living room. I do have an old TV here that I had my uh, old Xbox 360 connected to. But what I'm thinking is... This wall right here. I'm thinking that if this little experiment works out, I could put up a proper projector screen here and be able to play my games on a freaking wall-sized display with this projector. Uh, we'll see. This is just a little test run of the concept today. Sorry, Kirby. You gotta go. That's a pretty big wall. I hope the, the display could fill it up. This giant bright window might be a problem though, but we actually have a curtain on there that does a pretty good job of blocking the light. All right, so here is where the projector is going to go. Uh, temporarily, of course. This, if this experiment works out, I'll, I'll get a cabinet or something for this area to hold the projector and maybe a spot to stand at the arcade stick and crush some arcade games whenever I'm feeling spicy. This is just a proof of concept, just to make sure that it works and also to make sure that I like playing retro games on a giant projected display. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it a lot though. Hey, there we go. And yeah, uh, it'll automatically fix the focus and do an automatic keystone adjustment whenever you move it. I love that feature. Uh, before I play around with it, let's make sure that the Super Console stick works okay with this projector. Holy crap. Oh, those speakers. <laughs> oh my God. I, I was not expecting the speakers to be that loud and, and good. Man, that is freaking awesome sound. Okay, so obviously it's not bright enough yet. There's still lots of light in the room because on the other side of the basement, I have these giant patio doors and we don't have curtains for them yet. So I think if this becomes a permanent setup, then I'll, I'll need some blackout curtains for those too. Even though it's not dark enough yet, I wanted to quickly go through the extra features. Hopefully you can see this all right. Uh, there's a simple setup where you could connect to your Wi-Fi and stuff, and then you'll be taken to the main menu. Here you can uh, enable the Android TV, although, although I didn't want to sign into my Google account, so I didn't bother testing that. In the menu, you can enable the NFC broadcast, change the source, adjust the settings, and there's a file browser on here. Let's uh, try that out, why not? So I have this hard drive full of movies. I'll plug this into the USB. 
And then in the file browser, I could select the file and start up a movie. Uh, yeah, look at that. It, it works right away. This is a 4K MKV file too. So I think you'll be fine with any sorts of files that you throw at this. And I could use the screen mirroring on my phone without downloading any third-party apps. The performance isn't one-to-one. -one. There's a bit of latency. And this is more for just like watching stuff, like your favorite YouTubers on the big screen. All right, so here's the setup. Uh, we're ready to rock. <laughs> uh, now we just need to wait for the darkness. Holy crap, you guys. This is awesome. <laughs> I I'm going to try to say good stuff here to give you some sort of value rather than just gush about how cool this is. But let me just say this one time. You should be super jealous right now. This might have been one of my favorite retro gaming experiences that I've ever had. I've played retro games on handhelds, I've played them on computers, i played them on arcade sticks, i played them on big screens, but my dream of having a giant arcade machine was, until now, unfulfilled. This was the first time in my life that I've had an arcade stick on a giant projector, and the, the experience was like mind-blowingly good. Like, little tech dweeb inside me was screaming with joy the entire time. I intended to try it out just to film some stuff for the video, but I, <laughs> I stayed up way past my bedtime playing with this thing. I, I just didn't want to stop. Yeah, I play retro games all the time, every day, on all sorts of devices. But in the entire history of my channel, I've never played retro games in a way that felt so fresh. There's something about this combo. Projector plus arcade stick. It just hits me right in the dweeb. Okay, so uh, let's start with the screen. It's flipping gorgeous. When you have a dark room, that projector shines out such a bright screen. It, it's a feast for the eyes. And the ears. The, the speakers were amazing. <laughs> I, I knew they'd be better than average. The, the company talks about the JBL speakers in their marketing, but I wasn't expecting to be amazed at the sound. But when you get that audio pumping, along with the bright and beautiful screen so big it fills your vision, it's like the most immersive way to play a retro game. I think the image quality would be a, a bit better if I had like a proper projector screen. My, my walls aren't perfectly white, they're sort of off-white, so obviously the image isn't as bright as it would be if I had a proper screen. I, I just wanted to do this test to see if I liked it and if it would be worth it. And, and another reason I was having so much fun is the stick. And, and to be honest, it's probably the reason I didn't want to stop playing. I love playing retro games on sticks. It's the reason I built my arcade cabinet. Playing retro games on a stick makes the, the games feel like a totally different thing compared to playing with a controller or a retro handheld. With their tiny little buttons and d-pads, the arcade stick is a more immersive experience because you actually have to move your whole arms to do stuff. Moving your character and jumping and punching isn't just slightly shifting your thumb. You really have to be intentional about it, and that's why arcade games suck you in. The Kin Hank stick is really good. After using it for a night, I can say it's better quality than my own arcade machine hardware. The game console part of the stick is a very standard super console experience, which means that everything will be mostly configured fine, although like every Kin Hank product, you'll find that there are some annoying things that you'll want to adjust yourself. And of course, we have some messy ROM sets with a bunch of duplicate versions of some games for different regions and betas and stuff. That said, I was quite impressed at their performance. It's cool that we can play so much really awesome looking stuff on a cheap console like this. The usual suspects aren't going to run great. Cruising USA on Nintendo 64 is stuttery and don't expect to play every PSP or Dreamcast game. But if you want everything up to PS1 to run without issue, along with a ton of Sega Saturn, Nintendo DS, most Nintendo 64 and PSP and Dreamcast, then something like this is going to serve you very well. Of course, you can plug in extra controllers and use it as a home console. You don't have to play it arcade stick style. If you have friends over, just plug in whatever controllers you have or use Bluetooth controllers. You can totally enjoy multiplayer stuff on here. As for the gaming experience, Oh man, where to start? Gaming on a giant screen is a whole different situation from gaming on a retro handheld or even a TV. You're not going to want to play an RPG on a setup like this, for instance. Actually, you know what? Maybe you would now that I think about it. I played through Final Fantasy Legend 3 for the Game Boy on my arcade cabinet and I had a great time. But I'm a weirdo. I think if you're standing at an arcade stick, you, you've got to be playing action games. And if you're on a giant display, you're going to want to be playing games with lots of stuff to look at. 
racing games are the first thing that I think of when I'm on a giant display. There's something about seeing this screen so huge that it fills your vision that really makes driving a fast car feel exciting. Even for retro racers, especially actually. I love me some old school retro racing and until you've tried it on a giant display, you're not getting the full experience. Another style of game that feels amazing on a giant display is beat em ups. Not only are they bright and colorful with lots of action, there's also lots of eye candy. All the different characters with their different animations and the backgrounds usually have a bunch of like small details that you can really appreciate on the big screen. And we gotta talk about fighting games, of course. These games were made to be played on an arcade stick. I'm no fighting game pro. I kinda suck, but I don't care because I love playing these games. I don't care if I'm garbage because you know what? I sucked when I was a kid and I still spent all the birthday money my grandma gave me playing Street Fighter and Time Killers. The, the fighting games control amazing on this stick. I can pull off all my special moves without issue. And you guys know that I love shoot em ups, so I had to get some of those happening. It's a shame that so many great shmups are vertical format because it really doesn't take advantage of the big, beautiful wide screen that we have to work with. Still, shmups have a lot of things happening on the screen, a lot of tiny little moving objects, and you need to be able to track them to play properly. And in this respect, playing on a giant screen offers a significant gameplay advantage because you can just see everything so big and clear. I also really loved playing some of the better looking 3D stuff that this thing can run. Obviously, if I set this up permanently, I'll have like a, a gaming PC hooked up to it and be able to play PC games on the giant screen. But even the simpler stuff the Super Console could run, it felt impressive. This thing can upscale most PSP games to 2x resolution at least. And that's not crazy high res, but for games with lots of motion, it, it still looks great. And for systems like PS1, in lots of games you can upscale right right up to 1080p if you're into that sort of thing. Although for lots of the retro 3D systems, including PS1 and Sega Saturn, I actually prefer to run the games at their native resolution. <laughs> I like seeing those chunky pixels uh, the way that they looked when I was a little dweeb. Uh, uh, well, uh, this video has gone on a lot longer than I expected, so I, I gotta cut it off there. <laughs> Man, I, I could just blab on and on about these games for days. Uh, thanks for listening and sticking around to the end. If you would like to pick up your own Yabber K2S projector or the Super Console Arcade Stick, I'll have some links in the description below. Below. This video, like all my videos, is brought to you by the patrons of TechDweeb, who help make what I do possible. If you'd like to become a patron and support this nonsense, there's a link in the description below. And that's it from me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.